Ini lagi guys ya pengakuan yang sangat mengejutkan bahwa gaya hidup dia sewaktu pensiun di Malaysia itu jauh lebih Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan kembali lagi bersama Indra SFN Channel. Halo guys, apa kabar anda semua di sana dan hari ini pastinya aku sangat senang sekali, sangat berbahagia karena kita dapat berjumpa lagi, bertemu lagi pada video kali ini. Dan aku ucapkan terima kasih kepada anda yang masih setia menonton video-video dari channel ini guys ya bagi kalian yang baru bergabung. Aku ucapkan selamat datang dan jangan lupa ya tekan juga tombol subscribe sebagai bentuk dukungan untuk kemajuan channel ini agar ke depan lebih baik lagi, amin. Dan oke okay, di sini ada sebuah kisah yang cukup unik dan menarik. Sebenarnya Mat Saleh ini sudah pernah saya reaksi beberapa kali guys ya. Dan hari ini ini benar-benar adalah sebuah pengakuan dia secara langsung karena dia sudah 8 tahun di negara Malaysia guys ya kali ini dia memberikan pengakuan kehadapan publik guys. Jadi ceritanya seperti ini, ia adalah Mat Saleh yang berasal dari Florida, Amerika Serikat. Dia dari kecil hingga dewasa ya melakukan aktivitas di negaranya yaitu Florida. Setelah cukup lamanya dia bekerja di Amerika Serikat, tiba saatnya dia untuk pensiun dan memilih negara mana yang akan menjadi tempat tinggal dia selama ia menikmati masa tuanya guys ya awalnya dia lebih memilih negara Thailand rupanya ya guys ya setelah dia teliti lebih jauh akhirnya dia jatuhkan pilihan kepada negara Malaysia karena ada banyak Faktor yang membuat dia lebih memilih negara Malaysia dan hingga kini sudah 8 tahun ia di Malaysia dan ada satu pengakuannya yang betul-betul sangat mengejutkan guys bahwa dia berani mengatakan tentang antara pengalaman hidupnya saat dia bekerja dan juga saat dia pensiun dia lebih menyukai hidupnya saat ia pensiun di negara Malaysia daripada dia bekerja di negara Amerika Serikat. Nah, di sini juga dia akan menyebutkan faktor apa saja yang membuat ia menyukai negara Malaysia berbanding dari negaranya sendiri yaitu Florida Amerika Serikat. Oke guys, tanpa banyak basi langsung saja kita mereaksi video itu. Jom. Still be working now, and I'm 69 years old. Meet Andrew Taylor. He is a fellow YouTuber who moved from America to Malaysia eight years ago. Andrew told me why he left sunny Florida for retirement abroad, the biggest misconceptions people in the US have about Malaysia, and the main differences in mentality between Americans and Malaysians. I'm Max, an entrepreneur and YouTuber from Singapore. Let's go. What's the some stereotypes about Malaysia from the US? I think the biggest stereotype is that it's a Muslim country, and it's not a Muslim country. I mean, that's the official religion, but it's a secular country. They allow all religions. I think that's what most people think. And that's what I get the most backlash from is, how could you live there with all the, it's not like that. You don't know, you don't understand. Don't talk about something you don't understand. Come and visit and see for yourself. You know, it's, it's a wonderful place. How would you compare people like in terms of how people think, the mentality of people, Americans and Malaysians? Well, I think Malaysians tend to be much more trusting of the government and requirements of the government. Well, I think the U.S. has gone way overboard in the other direction of people demanding their freedom and, you know, they, they want complete freedom to do anything they want. Like, for instance, here, the country readily went along with all the requirements during COVID. You know, the lockdowns. I mean, yeah, there was grumbling and complaining, but not like in the U.S. I mean, everyone wore a mask, everyone stayed home. You couldn't even cross state lines, you know. That would never work in the U.S. There would have been riots in the street. Mm. But people, I think, either they trust the government or they realize that that was the right thing to do, at least in that situation. So people are so friendly and kind here, and they'll do things for you. It seems like they're just brought up that way with a more kind manner. I don't know if it, it's Islam, you know, could be partly that, but the Malays in general are very, very kind people. I mean, mm. my viewers, honestly, and I believe them, they send me emails and they say, if you need help with anything, just let me know. Mm. You know, that's, that's how so they sweet. are. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
And I've had people, I had someone drive by once and said, oh, I just drove by your place and we're having an open house this weekend. Can you come? You know. Wow, that's so nice. Tell me about your YouTube channel. Do you monetize it anyhow at the moment? For some reason, I got started and within three weeks I was monetized. So, and yeah. that's, from what I understand, pretty unheard of. You know? Yeah, it's, it's so good, yeah. <laughs> and this old guy, you know, starting with my phone, with my phone with no microphone and stuff, yeah. I only had five videos and I got monetized. That's amazing. We, because we, we've been teaching YouTube for a long time, like how to start a YouTube channel, and like three weeks, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I was, well, I was blown away. Yeah. Because I just, you know, I was doing it sort of a lark, then it just took off and I'm like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I'm getting all these subscribers and, you know, yeah. so it was, it was cool. It's, I'm not in it for the money, although, I mean, I'd like to make a little money. I, it basically pays my rent now. But also the amazing part is like use just your phone. I always say to people that if you have something to share and you have an idea, you don't need much to start to try because basically you need a clip mic and your phone and some idea and like some passion maybe to tell stories. If you think America can learn from Malaysia? Well, I think they can learn how to get along a little better because there's all these different cultures here and they all seem to do pretty well. I mean, you know, of course there's minor things, but in general, I think everyone's so proud of their country because of that. You know, because Malaysia is accepting of different religions and different people and different cultures. Okay, what's the three most irritating things for you about Malaysia? The one main thing I think that irritates me, aside from the traffic, which is <laughs> the number one most irritating thing here. Number two would be, I think that people are too either not allowed or just trained not to break rules or try to figure out a solution that's that's gonna work without going strictly by the rules, mm. which is very common in the US. I mean, you just, I mean, you, you can bend the rules. Most people in their jobs here feel like they can't bend the rules at all. You mm. know, like, I'm just talking mostly about in the condo here, you know, just silly things, like having to get the license plate number of the delivery truck that's bringing my TV. You know, mm. that's, and I'm like, you're kidding, right? You know, <laughs> why do you need that? <laughs> if I was the person doing that, I would have just said, Oh, just put any number in, it doesn't matter. But they yeah. won't do that. She actually called the place and got the number for me. It's another example of how wonderful and caring and, and generous they are in spirit. I mean, she had no reason to do that for me. Do you miss anything from the US or from your life in the US? Well, I think it's really hard to find good pork ribs here, but that's obvious. I mean, you can find them more in Penang because it's more majority Chinese, but I miss that. I mean, there's just not enough pork ribs, barbecue <laughs> ribs, you know, that's, yeah. I come, guess some of the Chinese restaurants have them. But. Yeah, come to Singapore for it. Yeah, I'll they have show, them there. I'll show you places, yeah. Yeah, great, yeah. What do you feel when you fly to the US? When I'm going to Florida, it's feeling of going home because that's the area I grew up in. Yeah. I, I work most of my adult life in Washington, DC, but I grew up in Florida and it feels like home. And I tell you, you can watch the news and see all the horrible things they say about the US. I'm certainly affected by that. I think, oh gosh, that just sounds horrible. It just sounds horrible. But in reality, okay, guys, kita pause when I went back, I don't notice those things. Uh, pause. I... Dan guys, ternyata ya, orang itu memiliki sifat dan juga pola pikir yang berbeda-beda, termasuk dengan Mat Saleh ini, apa yang telah difikirkannya. Ya seperti biasa terutama bagi dimanapun ia uh, menginap atau dimanapun ia bertempat tinggal Pasti akan memilih tempat yang lebih aman ya guys ya Karena dianggapnya bahwa negaranya itu sudah sangat-sangat tidak aman lagi Dan tepat sekali apa yang ia pilih dan ia juga menyadarinya hal tersebut ya Maka itu dia masuk di negara yang sangat aman sudah 8 tahun dia di sana dan tidak sama sekali mengalami hal-hal diskriminasi dan juga semacamnya guys terkadang walaupun tempat itu jauh lebih maju masyarakatnya bukan hanya memilih tempat yang lebih maju itu guys ya kadang kedamaian itulah hal yang dicari sesungguhnya oleh banyak orang oke okay. I still have the same friends they still have the same mindset 
I'm not fighting with everybody everywhere I go, you know. It's Mindset, just, yeah. It's just normal, and it, I think that the it's just extreme what they show on the news about what's going on in the U.S. Still, I don't want to be there, but it's. I think when you travel there, you just aren't going to notice it as being as horrible as they make it out to be on the news. Why did you uh, move out from U.S.? Why did you leave U.S. in the first place? When I first started thinking about it, I was about um, 55, so. I hadn't even really started thinking much about retirement. And then I met someone online and had a long distance relationship for five years, back and forth from Penang. I just loved it here and mm. realized that I could afford to retire at 60, which is almost unheard of in the US. You, I mean, <laughs> what age people normally would retire? Well, yes. the earliest you can retire and get your social security is 62, which is when I got mine. But now I think it's 67 for full benefits. I get 75% benefits because I took it at 62, but then I get all those years of it that you didn't, you, that I wouldn't have gotten if it was 67. Uh -huh. you know. And you could die before 67, you know. <laughs> so. sure. Let's imagine you would retire in the U.S. What would be your lifestyle like? How it's different versus your lifestyle here? Well, the thing there is that I just wouldn't be able to afford to do almost anything. And it's surprising, Max, because I pay for my condo in Florida. It has no mortgage, you know. Technically, it's like free to live there, right? Yeah. But the condo fee is more than I pay in rent here for this whole place, you know. So the condo fee, additional health insurance because not everything's covered under Medicare. And just eating out and food in general, everything, everything costs more. Everything costs more. I mean, in the U.S., I would still be working now, and I'm 69 years old. Honestly, I just never felt like I had enough money to save any money. You know, I was always living just to live. You know, it's fine for foreigners to come in and retire here. Because of the exchange rate, our money goes so much farther. It's not the same for Malaysians. Malaysians are having a terrible time affording to retire, similar to the people in the US. Now, unfortunately, if you're in Malaysia, you can't go to a cheaper country. It's sad. You mentioned in one of the videos that you rent out your place in Florida. Right? Yes. So it gives you passive income to comfortably live in KL. Yes. It does supplement my Social Security, which is my only other income. My apartment in Florida is much smaller than this, mm. but rents for three times as much, you know. So it more than pays for my rent here, and that's good. How much is this Social Security package, if I may ask? It depends on how much money you put into it. If you make more money, you're getting more from your social security. So, I mean, mine's less than $2,000 a month, getting closer to 2,000 now. So for you, basically, it's like 2,000 from there, 2,000 from the condo. It's pretty comfortable life, I think, for 4K USD. Yeah, it's, it's a very comfortable life. I was thinking about it before you came over today. I have a better lifestyle here in retirement than I had in the US when I was working. That's kind of amazing. My place is nicer. I get to eat out more. It's just awesome. It gave me a chance to retire that I never Whoa, thought guys, I guys, have. Bentar kita pause lagi ya. Dan ini lagi guys ya pengakuan yang sangat mengejutkan bahwa gaya hidup dia sewaktu pensiun di Malaysia itu jauh lebih enak dan juga lebih nyaman daripada gaya hidup dia saat bekerja di uh, Amerika Serikat ya guys. Karena di Amerika Serikat itu Apapun itu serba mahal, dia juga mengakui hal itu. Berbanding terbalik jika dia berada di Malaysia, dia pensiun di sana dengan menikmati uang atau income dari pendapatan dia per bulan. Dia bisa makan enak katanya guys di Malaysia karena semua harga di Malaysia jauh lebih murah ketimbang daripada harga yang di Amerika Serikat. Makanya itu dia tidak mau pulang setelah dia menikmati masa tua itu dan dia tetap di Malaysia hingga hari ini guys. Enak sekali. Malaysia memang diakuinya sangat murah ya. Only thing that's prohibitively okay, expensive here is alcohol, you know, <laughs> which is yeah. a drag. But then you don't drink too much because it costs too much. What would be the monthly budget, let's say, for two in their 60s or 70s in Malaysia, in Pinanco, in Kiel? If you're happy eating at Mamox and more casual eateries, you can easily do it for a couple. For, I'd say for 2,500 US dollars a month. Now I know people who have much more than that and they mm. live a little better. They travel more, they eat out in more expensive restaurants, things like that. But I find it, I do it for 2,000 a month. 
and it's just fine. I never run out of money. It's plenty. I can go out. I don't go and spend five, six hundred ringgit for meals, except maybe once every three months or something. But I don't just eat at Mamox mm. and street food, very little. Mm. Although I had chicken rice today, which is good. <laughs> this place, it's like one bedroom? It's one bedroom. They technically say it's 910 square feet, but they're counting this space here. So it's yeah. really 810 square feet. How much is this place? 400 US a <laughs> month. Yeah. Some people prob probably faint it right now. Like, very popular place for, let's say, Westerners in Asia, it's uh, Thailand. So many people ended up in there. Would you, like, let's say, what's the let's say, consideration process. Maybe for you, like you're here, you love Malaysia, but for someone who is thinking to, to retire here, and like the, most, the more obvious option is Thailand. Thailand's a very obvious option, and a lot of people love it. I think the infrastructure is not quite as the level of here in KL anyway. I just think it's the language barrier is the main, main difference. You know, right. I wouldn't probably have moved here if English hadn't been so widely spoken, because I'm just an idiot and I don't know any other languages. So it's so huge for me. And I guess you can get by in Thailand with English, but it's just not the same. You know, I recently have been to Cambodia and I think that that would be, if things went south for me here and I had, couldn't stay, if they kicked me out for some reason, I would go to Cambodia because it's a very affordable, lifestyle similar to here. At least in Siem Reap, English is widely spoken, and there's a ton of Western places there. You know, I, mean, I think the food scene in Siem Reap is better than KL, but I'm talking about Western food. What's your main principles in life? Something like really important for you? Well, the last job I had was at a church, if you can believe that, and it was a Unitarian church, which is very liberal. They're sort of one slogan is deeds, not creeds. And I think the slogan that they use for the church, for that religion, is very meaningful to me. And it's the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And that's sort of something I try to strive to live with. Let me show you some magic. If you click on this video, I will disappear and reappear again. Let's try it. Three, two, dan guys itu tadi guys ya bagaimana pengalaman dari Mat Saleh ini ya saat ini adalah dia berada di Malaysia pengalaman hidup dia semasa dari dia bekerja di uh, Amerika Serikat ya lalu dia berpindah ke negara Malaysia ya guys ya dan dia merasakan sebuah perbedaan dan kenyamanan saat ini sudah 8 tahun dia rasakan itu hidup uh, selalu memandang hal-hal positif, hidup selalu maju ke depan ya. Dia merasakan sesuatu aktivitas yang lebih baik ya, yang lebih aman dan nyaman. Dan ini adalah pengakuannya secara jujur. Maka itu sampai dengan detik ini sudah bertahun-tahun dia masih tetap menetap di negara Malaysia. Berbanding dengan apa yang dia dapatkan di negara Amerika, dia juga mengakui bahwa Amerika itu adalah negara yang tidak nyaman. Ya mungkin ada beberapa golongan yang merasakan hal tersebut. Namun ia sendiri juga mengakui bahwa Amerika itu adalah negara yang tidak aman. Mungkin ada di beberapa tempat yang tidak amannya atau juga ada beberapa tempat yang bisa dikategorikan nyaman guys ya. Namun tidak nyaman secara cara keseluruhan beda halnya bila dia rasakan di Malaysia dimanapun tempat ia masuk dimanapun ia singgahi di negeri manapun itu tentunya ia akan merasakan kenyamanan dan keamanan nah ini adalah hal yang paling penting ya guys ya keamanan dari diri kita sendiri apabila kita di negara orang lain kita akan berpikir panjang dan hal yang pertama jika kita masuk ke negara orang lain kita akan melihat atau juga menilai dari keamanan negara tersebut apabila negara tersebut sudah mementingkan atau memprioritaskan untuk permasalahan ini guys ya untuk keamanannya tentunya banyak sekali orang yang akan datang tanpa perlu diinstruksikan ya guys ya semua akan berdatangan dan itu akan sesuai dengan apa yang telah kita rencanakan baiklah guys demikian tadi video aku semoga video ini bermanfaat bagi kita semua dan aku mohon undur diri mohon maaf ya jika ada kesalahan kata kesalahan sikap mohon dimaafkan dan aku kira wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh